So, hey everyone, um, my name is Yerit. I've uh, been working on the telemetry project for a couple of years now, uh, maybe even more. Um, and yeah, let's, um, let's see what we have. So, today uh, we're going to have uh, an overview for telemetry. We'll have, uh, we'll understand better the motivation for it. Uh, we'll talk about uh, some architecture, we'll have some dashboard demos, and We'll see some success stories what we that we had so far. So, self telemetry uh, means that clusters phone home to report anonymized, non-identifying data about your installation, configuration, and so on. Uh, the data is then aggregated and presented in public dashboards, and uh, detailed data is available in private dashboards. Very important uh, for us to emphasize that by default, telemetry reporting is off and users need to explicitly opt in by agreeing to a license either by a CLI command with a Ceph telemetry on uh, or by using a Ceph dashboard wizard. Um, if you want to see uh, a report for uh, a sample for a telemetry report, you can do that um, with a CLI uh, command uh, for, with Ceph telemetry show all prior to Quincy. Uh, and in Quincy, uh, we use uh, Ceph telemetry preview all. So the telemetry report is broken down into several channels, uh, each with a, a different type of information. And once the user is opted in, telemetry channels can be turned uh, on or off. Uh, we currently have five channels. Um, first one is a basic channel uh, that has information about uh, the Ceph and kernel versions, the cluster size, how many demons are in the cluster, and so on. This channel is on by default, again, in case the user is opted into the telemetry. Um, and then we have the crash channel. Uh, it has um, information about where in the Ceph code the crash occurred. Um, we'll talk uh, more deeply about that um, uh, soon. And, and this channel is also on by default. And then we have the device channel, uh, which collects um, information about health metrics of the devices, uh, mostly smart. Uh, this one is also on by default. And then uh, the IDENT channel uh, has uh, the option for users to share their uh, contact details, like um, their email and what organization they're from. This one is, of course, off by default uh, and has to explicitly be uh, turned on. And in Quincy, we added uh, the PERF channel, which um, have all sorts of uh, perf counters uh, uh, of the cluster, and this one is also off by default. I want to touch about um, privacy. This is really important to us. Um, so in case uh, users are opted into telemetry and we add new data, new data to the reports, um, we, requires, we require users to opt in on a Ceph upgrade. Um, and in Quincy, we changed a little this uh, uh, design that uh, allows users to keep sending uh, whatever they are currently opted into, um, the, the current data uh, model version, uh, but they need to re-opt in for any new deltas. Um, the reports do not contain any sensitive or identifying data, like pool names, host names, object names, or object contents. We really just care about um we, we don't we don't care about who uh, owns the cluster we just care about the telemetry uh, information in it um we go to uh um we, we put efforts in anonymizing everything we can so the cluster is assigned um, a random uh, uid which is specifically for telemetry this is not the fsid of the cluster and the fsid is not reported we're, uh, we also remove the um, disk serial ID. Uh, it is redacted, and this is relevant uh, for the device channel. And the IPs um, are never stored uh, on the back end. Um, and in order to enhance privacy, uh, we are sending two separate uh, telemetry reports, one with the anonymized cluster data and the other with the anonymized device health metrics. These are sent into uh, two different endpoints. Now, why, why would we want uh, telemetry to begin with? So for developers, um, it's very helpful for us to get feedback on what features are in, in use in the wild. 
um, we can learn about the upgrade cadence uh, and to see how um, to learn about the version adoption rate. We can also know what um, hard disks and SSDs model uh, users are deploying. Um, and this also uh, helps us uh, to create uh, an open data set for, uh, of device health metrics. And the reason we want to do that um, is in order to have um, better of, uh, device failure prediction uh, models. Um, and I'll talk about it um, uh, very soon. Um, the telemetry data also uh, help us to learn um, about new bugs and issues as soon as possible. Uh, and we can also prioritize issues better um, having this information um, by focusing on the most common bugs. Um, we can also learn and discover uh, crash tre trends uh, through versions. And once we find the solutions for um, those bugs, we can verify that they actually work uh, by identifying regressions uh, if, if they occur. And this is all thanks to the crash channel. And for users, um, users can uh, validate, validate their installations by looking at what is common, um, what usually um, Ceph users are deploying. They can preemptively mitigate failing devices um, by um, donating and con contributing the um, smart data. Um, and this is a, a bit of a longer term goal that we have here. Um, so once we have a more accurate uh, failure um, device failure uh, prediction models, we can help the user understand that a device is about to fail, which helps to reduce downtime in the cluster and uh, shift downtime to a maintenance window and not to have it on a, a peak hour. Another big motivation for users is uh, they don't need to actively report issues or open tickets uh, for each crash um, that they have in their clusters. And um, they can use the open data set of the, the crashes to better understand an issue. So if you see a specific issue on your cluster, um, you can search it uh, on our bug tracking system and see if it's a real bug. And if it's a real bug, you can learn uh, what version it is fixed in. So I'll talk quickly about the workflow. Um, we have um, on the Ceph cluster side, uh, the manager that collects information from all of the demons in the cluster, and then it compiles a couple of reports, and then it sends it to the telemetry backend, where we have an Apache uh, server and a Postgres um, database. Um, and we have um, a couple of Grafana instances that um, uh, get information from the Postgres database. Now let's see what we have with the cluster data so far. So um, we, we can learn about the breakdown um, by versions uh, and to see the upgrade cadence uh, and version adopt of the sorry, adoption rate that I mentioned earlier. Um, and we also have uh, panels to learn about capacity density in, um, in, in the clusters that are reporting in the wild. So we can take a look um, at, at the public dashboard. I added the link for that in the etherpad as well. So you can see that there are nearly 2,000 uh, active clusters reporting telemetry and just uh, about 600 petabytes, which is amazing. Um, the blue bump here is uh, Quincy. We released it a couple of weeks ago, and you can see that there are already about 70-something uh, clusters reporting Quincy. Um, and then we can see uh, the actual number of uh, demons that um, report uh, Quincy as well. So there are about um, 3,700 um, demos that um, were upgraded to Quincy already. And we can see all sorts of uh, other um, breakdowns of information, um, like to learn about the total capacity uh, by version. So um, this help, help us understand um, if um, users uh, in the wild are adopting new versions um, and how quickly that happens. Um, this dashboard lets you see uh, breakdowns by major and uh, minor versions. So let's see, we want to take a look, uh, for example, at, um, at Pacific, um, but we want to see all the breakdown by minor versions in Pacific. 
So we'll just um, ask for a display by minor and uh, we'll ask specifically for Pacific. So here you can see uh, the adoption rate. Um, this uh, purple um, is 16 to 7 um, and it was released um, about the, uh, the end at about uh, this, it was December, right, of 2021. So you can see how it is being um, adopted by users in the wild. Um, we have some other uh, panels here. I will not get into everything. Uh, I, I really encourage you to, to take a look at them. Uh, and here we have a complete dashboard just for the breakdown for um, the capacity density of all of the reporting clusters. Um, let's take a look at uh, a cluster X-ray uh, page. This is uh, a page of um, the Giba cluster that we have um, uh, in our lab. Um, so we can learn about um, how old this cluster is, how many hosts it has, um, the total uh, and use capacity for uh, in a time series uh, manner. Uh, and then to learn about the pools and uh, PG num uh, of, of this cluster, to learn about um, the latest metadata of this cluster, we can see the reports. Um, like to we can see individual raw reports uh, for for each of these clusters, like in, in the cluster X-ray page. Um, we have uh, latest pools information, and we can learn about uh, recent crashes that happened in this cluster as well. So this was the cluster data. Um, I'll talk about the device data. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, let me know. There was All right. one that uh, Neha answered it, but um, the question was, are these 1,846 clusters deployed at a customer site? And Neha answered, there are all clusters. Oh, yep. Thanks. Thanks. So, so what, what is the typical, uh, is it only for the upstream deployments? If somebody deploys like Red Hat or canonical distribution, it will likely not report? They, they can. It's, it's up to them. So, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, uh, every, uh, every user, every operator um, has their own um, choice. So, if, if they are not, uh, if the cluster is not air-gapped, uh, they can opt into telemetry if they want to, but they have to explicitly do that. It does not happen in the background or anything like that. They explicitly have to opt in. So um, it can either be via the uh, CLI um, with the um, uh, Ceph telemetry on um, command or via the dashboard. And with the Ceph telemetry on command, um, we do require to enter the license, so it has to it, it has to be explicitly manually done. Um, okay, I, I was just asking because the, the comment was that all those clusters in the telemetry are upstream clusters. So that means that there are no uh, clusters running the version from a distributor. Sorry, the audio was a bit broken for me. Can you just repeat the last sentence? Yeah, the comment was that uh, all those uh, clusters reported in the telemetry are upstream clusters. Does it mean that there is no single cluster reporting that is kind of Reddit, Ceph, or Canonical Ceph, or always Nexus Ceph? Um, it, it is mostly uh, upstream. Um, we, we did see some reports from uh, different uh, um, OS, uh, such as a, um, from different uh, distributions such as uh, Red Hat distributions and um, SUSE's uh, distribution. Um, but this could also be, you know, like um, uh, a test cluster or anything like that. Um, we, we, don't, we don't know. Um, we, we, we don't know these clusters. It's all anonymized and unless the user uh, chooses to identify themselves, uh, we have no idea, uh, the organization. Yeah, I guess to emphasize that, I think the answer is most likely they're all upstream. Uh, it is quite possible that, you know, there is, you know, one-off cases where uh, a distribution like Red Hat or Canonical Ceph has enabled telemetry, but at the moment we don't differentiate. Yep. 
Thanks, Neha. Um, all right, so uh, going back to the device data. Um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we can learn about uh, hard disks and SSDs users are deploying, uh, and we have a breakdown by uh, vendors uh, and models. Um, so you can see that uh, easily Seagate is uh, the most popular um, device uh, that users are deploying with uh, um, 31,000, uh, nearly 32 even um, devices. Uh, we can take a look at the um, uh, at break, breakdown by models um, and learn that there are eight devices that uh, report uh, 20 terabyte uh, each. Um, we can also see, for example, uh, for Samsung, um, that most of the devices are indeed um, SSDs and NVMe uh, and see the breakdown um, as well by models. Um, so the reason we um, collect um, health metrics, um, which is currently uh, just uh, smart metrics, but we are working uh, um, in order to add vendor specific metrics as well. Um, the, the, the end goal here is to provide um, a disk failure uh, prediction service. So everyone knows that uh, in order to have a, a good model, um, we need a lot of uh, training data. And currently the only open data set out there is by Backblaze, um, which is really nice that uh, they provide it. Uh, but the problem is that it is limited uh, and it's not diverse enough. So um, we are um, opening uh, the device uh, data telemetry. We have uh, an open data set, um, which can be downloaded uh, from our website. Um, and we call for researchers um, to uh, do an open research um, about this uh, about this um, data and come up with uh, better um, models for predicting uh, failures. Uh, and we also have uh, plans to collaborate with other projects uh, in order to create a larger data set for this. All right. Um, the crash data that we have from the crash channel um, has uh, raw crash reports, uh, which contain um, each one of them contain uh, the crash ID, which is uh, uh, basically a timestamp plus a random UUAD. Um, it has uh, information about the daemon type and name, the Ceph version of the daemon, it has its backtrace, uh, the backtrace of, of, uh, of that crash specifically, and um, uh, it has information about um, the distribution and the kernel version. Uh, and if it was, um, if the crash happened due to an assert, uh, we'll have this information as well. Um, now, in case the user has um, um, enabled the basic channel uh, as well, or did not disable it, we will have um, information about uh, the cluster. So we can learn about the available and used capacity of, of the cluster um, at the time uh, of the crash, the number of demons, uh, their metadata, and so on. The thing is that we need to find patterns among these uh, raw crash reports. Um, so it will be, um, um, it will make more sense for developers to take a look at them. The problem is that um, same issues can have uh, different backtraces and this can happen due to um, different Ceph versions. Uh, the, Ceph, uh, the code has changed, so the backtrace looks a bit different. Um, there could be differences due to different compiler versions or compiler optimization. So um, one way that um, um, it, well, we found uh, to be effective is to sanitize uh, the backtrace. So in the back end, we have uh, a crash processor um, that looks at all of these raw crashes and identifies similarities um, among them. Uh, by taking those um, raw crashes and sanitize uh, their backtraces. Um, and it does that by removing uh, the offsets and addresses um, from all the frames. And then it applies uh, some search and replace patterns uh, and filter out patterns uh, from some frames that um, are just noise in the backtrace. Um, and then it adds the assert um, data if, if it's there and it calculates the signature um, using a SHA-256. Um, and this crash processor supports multiple generations or recipes of signatures, uh, which allows for backward compatibility. 
So it also supports uh, the version of uh, the crash signatures that we have uh, on the cluster side. Um, and then it populates the database, um, creating all of these uh, signatures for um, the raw uh, crashes. But just having the data uh, is not enough. We need to take action in order to, um, uh, to do something with those uh, crash reports. This is why we have the Redmine bot, uh, which queries the database uh, for the most recent uh, crash signatures. And then it maps those crash signatures into Redmine issues by searching Redmine uh, for these signatures. Um, and if it finds uh, an, uh, an existing issue, it updates it. Um, uh, otherwise, it uh, creates uh, a new issue um, and it knows how to pick up the, the right uh, project in Redmine for that. Um, so the information that uh, the bot updates um, is you know, some inf uh, essential information from the telemetry database, uh, such as affected versions, uh, sanitized and raw back traces, and it links to a dynamic dashboard that we'll see in a moment. Um, another important thing that the, uh, the bot is doing is identifying uh, regressions. So in case um, there was a, a a crash report that it synced with Redmine, and um, we found that it was a real bug, and we fixed it. Um, but then we uh, we receive new crash reports um, with a newer version than the one that has already be, been fixed. Um, the bot will open a new issue, and it will link it to the original issue, uh, which is uh, um, allegedly fixed. Um, and then. Um, in, in case in case the same thing happens, but uh, on an older major release, um, but with a newer um, minor, we'll just send an email about it because um, it might not be um, a real issue and um, we don't want to spam developers too much. So um, we have um, custom queries uh, for the crashes uh, that we sync. Um, so the first one would be uh, the crash uh, triage, or this one specifically is for um, Ceph for the entire project. Um, so we will have um, all the crashes here that um, that are new, um, that are opened by the telemetry bot. Um, if you want to take a look, uh, for example, at just uh, the blue store um, crashes that were opened by the bot, you can um, choose those custom queries uh, from the sidebar here. Um, so we have, yeah, we have uh, both um, um, the queue and the triage. Queue has everything which is open um, and the triage, uh, just the new ones. Um, the latest telemetry crashes sync that we had was uh, mainly for 16 to 7 uh, crashes. Um, and it's very important to emphasize here that not all crashes mean uh, safe bugs. It could be hardware issues, it could be environment or resource limitations or configuration issues, or it could be issues with uh, other dependencies as well. So there might be many um, uh, signatures uh, synced with Redmine, but they not all represent real uh, safe bugs. It's really important to emphasize that. All right, so we can take a quick look at the architecture on uh, the server side for um, the crash telemetry. So here we'll have the um, telemetry report lands uh, on the REST API. Um, it goes to the database and then the crash processor um, sanitizes the, the backtrace and um, generates uh, the correct signature. The, um, there's a Grafana instance that knows to query this um, database, uh, of course, the crash processor updates the database with all of the new signatures. Um, and then the Redmine bot uh, syncs uh, those signatures with Redmine. And there's another component um, that I will not talk about today um, that um, its essence is to improve um, the signature uh, creation for, for the crashes. So basically we we have uh, a bet better deduplication for uh, raw reports. All right, so we have a powerful uh, crash dashboard. Um, um, they allow to um, uh, discover trends in crashes 
versions. Um, it allows uh, searching by uh, vector is frames, uh, by versions, either major or minor. Um, all revisions of uh, signatures, um, the assert uh, function and condition, number of affected clusters, um, and to see the crash status. Uh, and it allows a drill down um, to the cluster information, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to take a look at um, um, how big the clusters that uh, um, experience a, a certain crash are, um, what versions uh, they are currently, and so on. All right, um, in order to access the dashboards, uh, developers uh, need to have an access uh, to the CPL lab and to be members uh, of the Ceph organization in GitHub. Um, Users can search Redmine uh, for the backtrace, um, for uh, specific frames in their backtrace, um, and for uh, crash signatures. Um, and I just want to emphasize here, um, if you manually create a, a Redmine tracker and you add the crash dump uh, there, please do not remove the stack sig key. It is not a secret and it really helps the crash bot um, to sync uh, similar issues that we uh, received through telemetry. All right, so let's take a look at um, the crashes um, landing page. So here we have all sorts of panels uh, that help us uh, have a bird's eye view um, of time series data of all the crashes and their signatures um, by the day. Um, and if you want to take a look at the new crash uh, signatures, um, for example, in the latest uh, 30 days, we can take a look at that. Um, and we can see that um, we have a breakdown by uh, versions here, um, either major or minor. We can learn about how many clusters are experience, uh, experiencing this information. Maybe I will, is this better like this? It was maybe too small. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, the font size is better. All right. Um, so uh, we can we can we can learn um, a lot about uh, all of the crashes that we've seen in telemetry um, in the last thirty days. Um, so, for example, if we see that. Um, there are six clusters that are experiencing um, a certain uh, issue that happens only on uh, some sort of a Quincy version. We can see it's 17.1.0 uh, and 17.2.0. Uh, we can click on that and uh, yeah, it's too big. <laughs> this is why it's a bit broken now. Um, and we can see that there are, uh, there's a total of uh, 11 um, uh, row crashes reported. Um, it has a um, breakdown by versions. So just one happened in 17.1.0 uh, and 10 by 17.2.0. Um, we, uh, we can have a look at the sanitized factories. Um, and here we can click um, on uh, the sanitized frame. This is a Python uh, crash. Um, so we, we can click on that and see uh, all, all of the other um, crashes that have this exact frame uh, in them. Um, so not necessarily the same issue. Um, this uh, this uh, crash did not happen uh, due to an assert. And here we can have a breakdown by um, daily occurrences. Um, and we can learn here about the affected clusters. Um, so we can see, um, uh, for example, uh, their usage, how big they are. And we can learn about their um, current uh, and recent versions. Um, so you can see that one of them has um, uh, mixed versions. So not necessarily all the cluster is upgraded to Quincy. And uh, here we can see the actual uh, raw reports. Um, so if you want to take a look uh, at, um, uh, at, at a report that was not sanitized, um, like with a raw backtrace, uh, we can do that as well. Um, and here, basically, when users uh, identify themselves, and um, some users uh, do, some users uh, want to um, 
identify themselves um, uh, with the developers. Uh, we will have uh, a list of, um, of these users here, but I removed it here for the sake of the demo. All right. Um, this work? All right. Uh, I, I want to take a look at a, a few examples um, of some um, success stories that we have with telemetry. Um, so as you know, uh, we launched um, uh, Quincy a couple of weeks ago. So this really helps us to monitor fresh reports um, of new releases, and we use that for Quincy as well. Um, so in the example that we just uh, saw, there were a few uh, crashes uh, just for um, that uh, happened in Quincy as well. But here um, you can see that um, the time frame is uh, we took a very big window here, which is, uh, of course, too big. Um, but then uh, we chose here in the miners uh, versions just um, uh, just 17.20, um, which was released uh, a couple of weeks ago. And here we can take a look. Um, there are currently 28 um, press signatures um, reported so far. And we can see that some of them happened um, in other versions as well, not necessarily Quincy. Um, and again, as, as I mentioned, um, not all of them are real crash, uh, set bugs, um, but uh, it does help us to, to monitor and better understand. Um, for example, this one has um, many affected clusters, uh, but this can just be uh, a problem with uh, hard hardware or anything that is not uh, related to Ceph. Um, all right, uh, let's take a look at some bug fixes that uh, happened uh, thanks to the sync with the uh, red line. So this one um, was created by the telemetry bot, this um, tracker. Uh, it assigned it uh, to the CephFS um, project and it uh, filled up all the relevant um, versions and uh, the crash signatures that it saw uh, in the wild and also one that was uh, um, created on the back end. And then in the description, it has a link uh, to, to the dashboard and has information about uh, uh, the assert uh, that happened, the sanitized spec trace, and um, a sample of a, of a raw crash dump. And it was picked up by um, the developers of CephFS. And there is a pull request um, that is um, fixing this issue that was seen in the wild. Uh, this is the page uh, that was linked uh, from the tracker. So you can see that there are a total of two affected clusters um, that uh, reported this issue uh, with a total of uh, 13 uh, raw reports. Um, and here's the breakdown by version. Um, here we can, <clears throat> sorry, click uh, on any of these uh, frames and see if they happened in other, um, uh, if they occurred in other uh, crashes as well. But here we see just um, one example, which is the one that we we're looking at. And we, uh, we can see, uh, again, the um, uh, daily occurrences, and if we are curious um, what version uh, the clusters uh, currently have, so we can see that one of them actually upgraded to, to Quincy. Um, so maybe um, it can help us uh, narrow down um, if, if the crash happens uh, just in Pacific and not in Quincy. Um, yeah, and here basically we'll, we could have um, the contact um, information uh, details for users that uh, identify themselves that experienced uh, those issues. All right, um, now we have another example uh, for another crash uh, that was reported through uh, telemetry and uh, was also picked up by uh, this time RGW team. Um, and they had uh, even backports um, so this issue um, happened, um, uh, it, it was uh, reported for 16 to 7, but they realized that um, 
it actually went uh, um, sorry uh, yeah it, it also happened uh, in octopus so it helped us um, discover an issue that uh, even though it was reported just for one version um, needed to be backported even uh, further um, now we have a, uh, another use case um, for a tracker here that was reported um, by a user and they complained about uh, this issue uh, that it happened in 17.00 and um, Neha went uh, and checked the uh, telemetry uh, crash dashboard and it helped us uh, understand that we actually saw this um, in telemetry um, already in 16.25. So those uh, crash reports help to better uh, investigate um, this issue and um, we understand that it's um, earlier than whatever the user was reporting. Um, all right, then I wanna talk about this uh, tracker real quick. So this issue was um, uh, first, um, oh, sorry, is this this one? Yes, um, so it was opened uh, by the telemetry bot and we can see that um, we, um, when it was um, uh, found during the bug scrub, um, we discovered that we need more information uh, to debug a crash like this. And a user actually found this uh, tracker uh, by searching uh, by, by searching it, and um, it supplied us, uh, provided us with uh, some uh, additional information. So users um, can respond to uh, whatever uh, we see in telemetry through the bug tracking system. Um, and I mentioned earlier that um, the bug can detect regressions. So we can take a look uh, at this um, tracker here that it is uh, resolved and um, the version um, uh, here is uh, 15 to 8. But we can see that um, a new tracker was opened uh, recently uh, by the telemetry bot and it says that new crash events were reported uh, via telemetry with newer versions um than in encountered so far this happened because um that tracker is related to other uh trackers this is why it picked up 1620 um but it linked it to the previous issue so might be a regression might not be a regression um we um we have to investigate but at least we have um this option um of knowing that it happened. So like I mentioned, um, sometimes um, just the raw crash reports are not enough and users identify themselves so we can contact them and ask for more information to better um, debug an issue. And this um, issue um, was first uh, reported uh, uh, in a bugzilla. Um, you can see about a year ago. And it was picked up um, by by the bot, uh, and that's uh, thanks to to the fact that we had the stack signature here. So um, there were similar crash reports uh, through telemetry that the, the the bot could scan Redmine and update an issue instead of uh, opening a new one. Um, and and we saw that uh, uh, we have links here to to these um, crashes uh, in telemetry, we can see that uh, there are 49 uh, affected clusters by, by it. Um, and this helped um, to prioritize this issue. Um, Neha, if you want to say a few words about it, because uh, this uh, a recent um, tracker that uh, we're, we've been working on. Yeah, so I think uh, this particularly um, is interesting because this is one issue that uh, uh, we saw, as um, Yarid mentioned, in downstream, but we hadn't seen it in upstream. And when you look at the uh, the crash, it seems very intuitive, like it should have shown up. Um, and clearly, that was where my curiosity um, arose, and I checked 
the dashboard and I saw that there are users that are hitting it, so clearly um, there was something missing in our integration tests that was not catching it. And Junior uh, uh, was assigned this bug and he did a great job of identifying why we were not catching it. And clearly um, with, um, so, Going into the specifics, there is a way in uh, Ceph ADM to remove um, demons. So the, there were no tests that were actually exercising the fact uh, to reduce demons in a cluster. In this case, monitors. Um, so which is why we would see this. And uh, also turns out that if you do uh, you use a regular manual procedure of remo removing monitors, you wouldn't hit this crash, which explains why the other tests weren't catching it. So essentially, um, that's I mean I guess. That's where one extra data point helped us prioritize this bug, and this is a real issue which we are um, fixing and now also reproducing in pathology. Thanks. Um, and I want to um, I want to take a look uh, again at this um, uh, this tracker and um, see how uh, let let's say that um, for some reason we did not have anything uh, in um, we, we did not have the Telemetry bot uh, uh, synced uh, whatever we saw in telemetry um, with Redmine, um, maybe because um, it was an older version or uh, we just um, haven't synced it yet. Um, we could uh, manually search uh, the telemetry dashboard for it. So, for example, we can see that um, we have the backtrace included here. Uh, and if we scroll all the way here, we can see um, that th there's uh, the function name. So we can we can copy uh, even a small part of it, um, and we can go to to the search page and basically search just for the specific um, function. So uh, we can leave the five years window. That's fine. Um, and we can see that w there are seven uh, crash fingerprints or crash signatures um, that are reporting uh, a pretty similar issue. So the reason that um, they are uh, again not uh, all grouped together in case in case there are they are similar is um, uh, we did not detect um, um, the, the back traces were different enough and um, the filtering out. I uh, did not detect that it, it is indeed the same issue. Um, so this is one one uh, thing that uh, we're still working uh, on improving. So so again, even even if you see any um, problem there uh, out in the uh, even in tautology or um, in downstream or uh, wherever, and you don't find it in tracker. Please use the dashboard. Um, you can again search uh, just for the assert function. Uh, there was uh, also an assert uh, condition in this case, so if we can, we can well, this one uh, I guess it was uh, good enough. But uh, sometimes uh, the assert condition is not is not very not very um, not give us too many details. Um, so in this case, um, yeah. Still seven, same thing. Um, or we could just use uh, some uh, frames in the backtrace. But here, uh, it will not help us to search for uh, frames that we filter out because uh, we uh, we will search only in the sanitized backtrace. So, for example, if I search for this um, frame over here, uh, it would better. Um, it will probably find better results. So yeah, so you can see that um, there are three crashes that were not mentioned here. Um, probably a different uh, uh, way of execution. Um, so th and th this is this is an important um, point here. If you don't find it in Tracker, please use the dashboard. Um, it can it, it it might not be synced with Tracker yet. Um, so that's important to to emphasize. Um, yeah, and there are some other um, um, use cases that telemetry was very uh, useful. Uh, so, for example, we wanted to know whether uh, file store can be deprecated. So um, we looked at the data that we have so far with telemetry, um, and 
produce these uh, panels to um, see how many um, uh, files, file store versus uh, um, Blue Store um, OSDs are out there. And you can see that um, uh, we have a breakdown here by uh, major versions. Um, so, for example, in Pacific, there are very, very few uh, demons that uh, are reporting file store. And if you want, we can just uh, have a breakdown by um, just Pacific. For example, uh, if you want to see um, the minor uh, versions that are reporting. Um, and I think I think we announced that um, uh, it will be deprecated and this data point uh, was very helpful. Um, so we, we did use uh, uh, the survey for that as well and uh, probably mailing lists, but uh, telemetry uh, give us real real time data and it makes your voice heard as users. So, so it helps us uh, to better understand what's going on in the wild. So you can see um, uh, the ratio for um, uh, blue store versus file store in uh, 16 to, to 7. Um, we were also asked uh, whether the erasure code clay plugin uh, is being used in the field. Um, so we did the same. Uh, we had uh, panels for that. Um, and we saw that it is being used by real clusters in the field and there were no related uh, crash reports um, to that. Um, so another a uh, real data point um, uh, to make decisions. Uh, and I, I think now we are, we are um, uh, even uh, developing it uh, further. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was, uh, this, this code was donated um, by a, a researcher, um, um, and, but we did not uh, uh, call it uh, as a production code, but now we understand that clusters are actually using it. Um, and telemetry data also helped us uh, to um, uh, find better tuning to the Ceph dashboard. Um, they needed to know um, the magnitude uh, of how many uh, RBD images are deployed uh, by Ceph users, um, and uh, they had some scalability issues, and this information really helped them um, uh, in order to fine tune the dashboard. So, um, for all the users out there, please uh, join us with uh, opting into telemetry with uh, Ceph telemetry on. Uh, you can see that it is super, super useful for us uh, and it helps us make a better product, um, more robust um, and have a higher quality. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to take uh, any questions uh, if you have. I see that there are questions here. Yes. Uh, so I will I will have a link um, a link to that as well. Uh, but basically, um, on that on that page, uh, you can just um, uh, click um, here and see all of the related. Um, uh, all the related dashboards, but I'll, I will I will add a, a link to that you know, in the Etherpad as well. That's a good question. And um, how can developers access collected reports? So uh, as I um, I showed uh, with the um, cluster uh, in the cluster page, we have all the reports here. We can see uh, raw reports here, um, uh, but if if uh, there's uh, a need uh, to have them in another uh, format, we we need to have access to the database. Um, are there any more questions? So uh, going back maybe to my original question about the upstream versus distributions. If the reporting, and it's understandable, if the reporting comes mainly from the upstream deployments, it is likely very skewed towards developers and less to, maybe less to production. And uh, then if you make decisions uh, for future directions based on those reports, maybe they are a little bit biased towards those developers upstream deployments. 
Right. So, uh, are there any plans to promote telemetry adoption by the uh, people who use the distributions and then not upstream? Um, there, there are um, uh, plans to uh, promote it downstream, uh, specifically uh, in Red Hat. Uh, but I just, I just want to say that uh, uh, if we take a look um, at um, at that uh, telemetry um, public uh, dashboard, um, so there are not all um, developments. Uh, it's as we can see that there are all that there are some real clusters that are reporting here um, if we if we can um, if, if we take a look at the cluster distribution by um, total capacity so you can see that um, there are uh, clusters that are reporting um, that are that are pretty big um, so th these are not just um, development uh, uh, for for as much as we can assume um, another thing is that uh, there are uh, clusters that um, uh, the admins really want to uh, report telemetry, but they cannot because they're air, air gapped. Um, and we're thinking of uh, supplying a, a solution for that. Um, so these are again real deployments, uh, but they cannot uh, contribute their data because of um, this issue of being air gapped. Going back to the development versus uh, real cluster question, I think uh, the scale of uh, the cluster tells us a story about whether it's a real cluster or a dev cluster. And the other thing is most of the development only happens on the master branch or the main branch. Um, so the version number is an indication of whether it's a development cluster or uh, the, um, a real cluster as well. Yeah, that's a very good point. Thanks. Thank you. Very interesting presentation, thanks. by the way. And thanks, thanks for doing this during the holiday. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Happy holiday. Yeah, the the, the demo. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the demo. Yeah, hi. Yeah, the demo you did just um like for a brief um, period with like the the bug that I was working on was really helpful. Like um just showing around like how we could. Um, you know, find the the actual like crash signature using like um, strings and um, using um, assert functions. That, that was nice. So thank you for doing that. Thanks. I'm very happy to hear that. Um, all of all of the information is there, um, but not yet synced with Redmine because we want to better dedupe um, the crashes. So we're not overwhelming um, uh, developers with um, crashes that can be uh, better uh, deduped. So um, so it's there. We just need to actively search it. Um, yeah. Uh, Laura, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I just had a quick uh, detail to add about um, the developments we're doing in a, uh, or the idea we have to collect um, or track unavailable data in clusters. So um, that's not a, a data point that's being uh, currently collected, but uh, that's set in place for Reef. So essentially, um, the idea was that in Ceph clusters, there are ways to identify unavailable data through like PG states when PGs were last active. And there are ways to see that in the Ceph clusters right now, like through um, through warnings that pop up about data availability and by looking at the PG map. Um, excuse me, but there aren't ways to track that data over time right now. So uh, we are thinking about uh, ways that we can uh, take that data, look at the PG states when they were last active, and calculate some sort of uh, data availability score uh, that can be that can indicate how uh, when data was available and. Um, maybe during over the course of a week, your data availability score was like 80%, something like that. Um, and then the goal is to uh, include that in telemetry so that we can have reports of data availability tracked over time and uh, collected through opting into telemetry. And that is um, an idea for, for the next release, Reef. Yes, thanks for mentioning that. Yes, and this, um, um, this data, um, 
is uh, going to be collected in the perf channel. So um, yeah, we might we might add some uh, highlight information in the ba basic channel as well. Um, but yeah, this this can really uh, help um, help us better understand deployments as well. Um, yeah, so so please please um, um, again, like we said, uh, when you want to make your voice heard, please opt in to telemetry. We really just care about the data. Um, we're very open to feedback. Uh, let us know uh, if you have any ideas for improvement or anything we can do better. We'll be very happy to do so. Um, and developers, please use uh, the dashboard, the crash dashboard. Uh, let me know if you have any questions um, or any other ideas. I'll be very happy to um, to hear. I have just one more question about the the general UI of the dashboard. So uh, the the public telemetry link is that providing more of just an overview of all of the data collected versus the sepia link, which is where developers can find the crashes. Is that the difference there? Yes, exactly. Yes, this is the uh, aggregated data in um, the public dashboards. Um, so it has more of a cluster cluster data uh, aggregated uh, and device uh, data as well. And um, the, the private one is more aimed at the, at the crashes, yes. If developers will want to search for crashes, they'll go to the telemetry.front.sepia uh, link and search for crashes there with the sepia VPN enabled. Exactly, yes. Um, that spec, um, spec search page. I, I will add a link to that uh, in the um, in the etherpad as well. Um, yeah, and please remember uh, to to check the time frame here. This is really important because sometimes it just last thirty days, um, but uh, you actually want to see uh, some um, more data. Um, so you need to go back a little bit more. Um, and make sure that um, the fields are, um, so if, for, for example, now I want to see just uh, in the last uh, 30 days, all of the crashes that happened, um, let's see, just in 16 uh, to seven. Um, and then I don't understand, uh, okay, there are just two crashes, but that's because I have this um, search for um, this string in the backtrace. So, uh, if I move it, uh, I'll just I'll see everything um, of everything on the last 30 days for 16 to 7. Um, I can also see. Um, let let's say that um, I'm curious what also occurs in Quincy, any uh, version of Quincy. So I'll add the major affected uh, version here, um, and I'll see that there are 17 crashes that happen uh, in 16 to 7 uh, and any version of Quincy. And of course, they could happen in other versions as well, but this would be the, the default. Um, and also, uh, we can um, see only new uh, fingerprints in this time frame. So for example, this um, signature here uh, was first uh, seen in um, um, 2019 uh, and last uh, occurred in uh, 2022. Um, like uh, um, yesterday. So uh, let's say I, I just care about new fingerprints in the last 30 days. So I will change that to only new fingerprints and there aren't. Um, everything that happened, uh, everything that we saw uh, happened prior to um, the last 30 days. Um, so so that, that can really help also to narrow down um, uh, any any issues that we want to to look at. Of course, you can look, uh, search by daemons here as well. You can search by um, the the stack um, signature, uh, the crash signature. Sorry, uh, either version two or version one. Um, and if you want to search by more than one um, string in the backtrace, you have three um, you have th uh, three substrings that you can search for. 
So um, this can also help narrow down uh, relevant issues. Yeah, there are some status search as well. It's very, it's um, very extensive. So yeah. Um, yeah. Does anyone else have any question? Very good demo. Thanks, Jared, for uh, walking us through the dashboard and letting us know how we can use it. Uh, sure, pleasure. Um, uh, yeah, and if you have any questions, please uh, reach out. Um, and um, currently, uh, again, as I mentioned, there's work um, done to improve the deduplication of the crash signatures. So. Um, Casey um, uh, helped with um, uh, his feedback uh, with the, uh, the bug scrub that uh, they did on the most recent uh, sync for 16 to 7. Um, it's not an easy problem uh, and try to um, apply some AI tools in order to better dedupe that. So work in progress. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, and uh, we'll see you in the next Tech Talk or any other. At the, del at the telemetry huddle, maybe. Yeah, you're very invited. It happens every Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, it's on the community calendar, so you're very welcome to join us. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you. Thanks, Thank everyone. you. Bye-bye. Thanks. thanks. Bye-bye.